The third and final rocket launch from the Northern Territory's Arnhem Space Centre near Nullumboy has gone off with a bang. Joining me live is Equatorial Launch Australia Executive Chairman Michael Jones. Michael, thanks for joining us. Uh, how did it all go last night? Yeah, no, we had a, another really successful launch. Um, we had decided in the days leading up to launch three that the weather forecast for later in the week was looking a bit, uh, a bit hazardous for us. So we pulled it a day early and uh, we were able to get the launch off only five minutes um, after the scheduled time, which was really good. The data collected for the scientists was excellent. So all in all, a, a very, very successful mission. And for us, you know, a combination of uh, three launches in 15 days, which is quite an achievement and, and not rarely seen... Oh, sorry, it's rarely seen around the world. It hasn't been done very often. So we're very happy. So tell us about the purpose of these three rockets and, and the sort of data that they're collecting. Yeah, so there was uh, two different universities used. The University of Wisconsin did the first um, mission um, and they um, were specifically looking at um, an area of the Milky Way where there is some sort of um, astrological anomaly and they're looking at that to sort of see, you know, what that has to do with um, sort of the creation of the universe, etc. cetera. Um, the next two were the University of Colorado and both of them were looking at the Alpha Centauri star cluster, Alpha Centauri, Alpha and Bravo, which for Australians, the, the Southern um, Cross, uh, it's the two pointers uh, attached to that. So normally when you look at it, the left-hand one is Alpha Centauri Alpha and the right one is Alpha Centauri Bravo, depending, of course, which way you're looking at it. Um, but, yeah, they were looking um, specifically at the spectral radiation coming out of those stars, which are equivalent to the sun in some ways, and they're, they're our closest stars somewhere around... 430 million light years away and by getting out of our atmosphere um, and doing it out of the effect of the sun they were able to use very sensitive and highly developed different methods of um, using telescopes to look at those stars and and do the scientific research so that's the reason why they're in the southern hemisphere um, those phenomena can only be seen um, to the de degree of fidelity that they're after from the southern hemisphere and um, and so they took the opportunity and these you know, for the scientists, are missions that have been 10 years in the planning and for us, um, three or four years in the planning. Now, a lot's been said about the location of the Arnhem Space Centre. It is in a beautiful place there in northeast Arnhem Land. Of course, it's close uh, to the equator and uh, a lot's been said as well about the stable geopolitical climate uh, here in Australia and in the Northern Territory. But uh, I tell you what, you must have brought the weather with you because uh, normally in the top end at this time of year we have uh, sunny days and clear skies, but uh, it was a bit cloudy and windy and that uh, caused a few hiccups, particularly for that second launch. Yeah, as you'd expect, I've spent a fair amount of time in the Northern Territory and uh, this is not the dry season you normally get. And, you know, we normally boast when we're travelling around the world to prospective clients and tell them how awesome the, the weather is for a space launch this time of year. And we've had completely the opposite. We've had rain, wind, cloud. Um, it's been very weird. But, you know, from a personal perspective, I don't particularly like the heat and the humidity. So it's been very pleasant. We've had mid-20s. Um, cool in the evening and everybody's going, God, have I been here too long? Because they've been going to put a jacket on. So very unseasonal weather. And we've had this prevailing easterly wind for a couple of weeks now, which has been blowing, blowing quite hard, both at the surface and at altitude, which, again, is really unusual and we don't normally get. So hopefully we've seen the last of it. Um, but we we're very fortunate to be able to get through the, the full launch program in the time frame. Uh, that we wanted and uh, and therefore, we, you know, like I said, we finished a day early, so that's great. Yeah, I think there's plenty of people up here in Darwin who are hoping we've seen the last of it as well. I don't think they've uh, been at so many jumpers out over such an extended period of time, certainly uh, that I can remember in my time here. But uh, moving on, Michael, what are the plans for the Arnhem Space Centre from here? You've had these three launches. They've all been successful. Uh, are there bigger and better things ahead? Yep, so what happens for us now is we've already started the uh, um, the bump out and pull down of the NASA um, equipment, and that's going to take a week and a half or so um, till we get it all loaded onto uh, trucks and ferries and get shipped out. Um, and then most of the team will start to leave by the end of next week. Our team will then do a period of reconfiguration of our um, centre 
um, a lot of what we were doing was very NASA centric as far as where our uh, launch control and our range control centres were. And we're moving them back up next to our ops centre. Um, there are a number of uh, reconfigurations from US power back to Australian power that we will need to do some finishing off of um, a little bit of the accommodation area and rejigging and a bit of refurbishment and maintenance after the occupation by NASA. We then start um, preparing for the next launches, which we hope will be you know, subject to regulatory approval. And that's the long pole on the tent for us at the moment is how long is it going to take to get the licensing for the next launches? But uh, basically, we're hoping to, to achieve um, two additional launches by the end of this calendar year or early in the new year, and then, you know, on a very regular basis after that. So in parallel, we'll have three activities, one of which is the, um, the business development aspects of continuing to fill up our order book. The second one is, like I said, the refurbishment and reconfiguration of the site from NASA for, you know, even more launches um, in a commercial space. And the third part which is really exciting for us is the next phase of our development and the, you know, the expansion of the site so that we can have both high tempo operations and Lord larger rockets as we go. So they're the three parallel activities that we'll, we'll be on at the moment. Exciting times ahead. Uh, Michael Jones from Equatorial Launch Australia. Thanks so much for joining us today.